Hi there Fabric Jugglers, it's Babs here from Fiery Phoenix and today I'm going to take you through the process that you need to follow to create this lovely braiding effect. This is another in the Presser Foot collection and today we're going to be looking at the piping or cording foot. I record lots of tutorials, I release them every Tuesday and Thursday, so if this is your first time here, thanks for popping by. Um, Consider, please consider um, subscribing to the channel or taking a look around to see if there's anything else that interests you. There is a set or series of tutorials all around how to use presser feet to achieve different um, techniques or effects and there'll be a link somewhere around the screen for you to take a look at. But if you're interested in seeing exactly how this particular foot works, stick around and um, I'll show you how that happens. So the first thing we need to do is look at how the foot itself is actually constructed and we've got a bar attachment here. Underneath we have three grooves where the actual braiding will run, not braiding, I keep saying braiding when I actually mean the piping or cording. Um, I'm using some tapestry thread because that actually works with the fabric I'm using but you can buy different types of, of cording if you wish. Uh, I also have a tutorial on how to create your own cording if you want to do that so that it matches your projects perfectly. So check that one out as well. And then on the front we have this little bar that you can raise. Now it's very tight but you lift this up and then you insert the cordings through these three runs at the beginning. And this is the trickiest part of the whole process. Everything else is a breeze. This can be um, oh, such good fun. So... It's, it's quite tight and unfortunately my nails are quite long at the moment so this might be difficult so I'm going to be quiet and, um, and thread it through and if this takes far too long then I'll just skip to where it is threaded through but you'll at least get an idea of what we're doing. So we're taking the first thread and we hold it underneath, thread it through the gap and then slide it under and this is where it all gets a little bit tricky. So that's in the centre. And you don't always have to use three um, three cords at the same time. You can use just the one, or you can use two. Um, there we go, that's the first one in. Uh, it's entirely up to you, uh, but I'm going to show you with all three, just so you can see how the highest level of, of use, if you like, the uh, the greatest number of cords in place actually looks and works. There we go. The more you use this, the easier it will become, um, the looser this little bar will become, which makes it just a little bit easier to get everything in place. And I've got one thread that isn't going. There we are. Pull that through. There we go. So that's two of those in, and now on to the third. So much for me shutting up, eh? seems to be impossible I can't can't do that and then we have the final one which we just clip into place now sometimes you can tie these together I've not actually found it an issue that I need to tie those together but what you need to check is that on the reverse the the cording is actually running through those three little little slots it just makes things that bit easier for us so now we've got that we can load up the machine. So the stitch we'll be using is this triple zigzag and it will jump in between each stitch. So as you can see here, it stitches in between each of the cords so that holds it in place very nicely. So now that we've got this, as I try to pick it up without messing it all up, now that we've got this threaded, we've got the three cords in, we've got the three cords across the back. We can now, making sure that the, the, the reels of cord aren't going to get tied up, pop this across here and just, as this is a bar fitting, just drop it down into place and then we are ready to go. The um, the regular thread, I'm using a very contrasting blue so that you will be able to see what's going on as long as my hand gets out of the way. You'll be able to see what's going on. So we've got the thread coming out the back, we've got the cords coming out the back. Some people would, would need to tie these together. I don't personally feel the need to do that as I will hold them as we start to feed the, the um, fabric through. 
So we drop the fabric in place, make sure that the, the threads have enough play that we can move through. And what I will do is I'll just hand crank, as I always do with any foot um, the first time I'm using it. I'll just hand crank that through just to make sure everything is, is behaving as we're expecting it to. And hopefully you can see that the, um, the needle is jumping between the three layers. Now if you can't see that, I shall play around with the position of the camera and the foot, see if we can get that closer up for you. Bear with us a moment. There we are. So hopefully now you'll be able to see, as I hand crank, that the needle comes up and over the first dark orange, and then across the centre orange, and then over to com completely cover the pale orange. So I'll just run through that with the actual machine running itself rather than me hand cranking it. And what you need to do is make sure that these threads are still sitting in the right place. And this one's just jumped out. So that's not going to be working so very nicely. So we need to just move that back over to where it should be. So if I raise that slightly ease that pressure so that can come across and this is why we need to keep these threads in their own positions so we've got one in the center one off to the side and I'll just keep these separate as they start to run through once they're running everything will work quite happily and there we have it so now we've got the three sitting quite happily where they're supposed to be. And um, I'll show you the outcome. Again, don't try and pull everything forwards. Try and pull things backwards. And you will need to snip away the cords. Otherwise you'll be dragging everything through the machine, which won't be very helpful. So make sure the needle is out of the way. And then pull it all backwards so that, that feeds through. And then once you've got the machine out of the way, you can see, if I can get that in, in focus for you, you can see that's the effect that we've created. And where they're actually running nicely parallel. And then here you can see where it all went a little bit squiffy. Here it went just a little bit squiffy where it jumped across. Now it's still okay, but you can see you've got the two threads in one stitch instead of having as down here, one stitch per thread. So this is the, the effect that you're looking to get, although even that when it's gone a bit squiffy, it's not hideous. Uh, just make sure that you're paying attention as you're sewing. But that's how you solve the problem, the only problem that you get with this foot. And um, I really like it. I think it's a gorgeous effect. And whilst I've used a really dark blue, and that's so you can see the stitching clearly, you can work with... Um, <coughs> You can work with invisible threads, you can work with iridescent threads, you can work with contrasting, with um, with, with threads that, that match. Um, you can have all sorts of fun. So this is my, my simple overview on how to use the braiding foot. Hopefully it's been of use to you, and if it is, please, I've lost my thumb, give it a thumbs up, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.